Joining me now to talk about the Democratic presidential race is Karen Fitty. She's the communications director for the Clinton campaign. Karen, thank you for joining us today. Great to be with you. One correction. I, I don't want my boss to get mad at me. I, uh, I'm a senior advisor and communications uh, advisor. Jennifer Palmieri is our communications director. All right. I just promoted you, but uh, <laughs> oh, you know, you. maybe that'll come across in the next contract. Thank you. Okay. Uh, so just, just bluntly to start off, why did Clinton lose Michigan? Well, look, I mean, it was a state that where Bernie Sanders out, they outspent us. They had more people on the ground. It was clearly uh, as a must-win state uh, for Senator Sanders. And, you know, while it turned, it was close, it, he came out with a win. I think it's as, as simple as that. I also think it's quite clear that uh, the polls were wrong. Well, no question. We, we've seen a lot uh, of, of uh, precedent for that. But, it, but there were signs uh, in his victory that, that could be worrisome going forward. Because Sanders, he, he didn't just win over young people in independence. He also made inroads among blue-collar voters there. I, I just wonder, how does the Clinton campaign eliminate that disconnect going forward? Well, look, I think we're going to take a look at the next five states, and I think Senator Sanders will have the opportunity to demonstrate that he's able to put together the coalition that you absolutely must have to win, and that includes African-American voters, Latinos, women. So he's, you know, dem he hasn't quite yet demonstrated the ability to, you know, put that full coalition together. Meanwhile, Hillary has won in the North and the South and the East and the West uh, and put together, you know, a very diverse coalition of voters. So we're going to be working hard moving towards Ohio and those other states for next week. Uh, and making sure that they understand her, me know her message about the importance of job creation, how she wants to increase income. No, we're, we're, uh, we're, and we're familiar with the message, but, but I do have to ask you, because there's this story, and people were talking about this last night, Hillary Clinton, she's going to wrap it up uh, last night, and again, well, not, able to, not able to do that. I just wonder how you fight that, that, that sort of sense of disappointment, or that the, the, that the momentum can't build enough behind her candidacy. A lot of, a lot of Democratic well, voters still have questions about her. I mean, Jim, come on. All yeah. due respect, I mean, it was, you know, she trounced in, in Mississippi, and we still ended the night uh, very much in the lead and, frankly, you know, very much in a very strong position going forward. I mean, at the end of the day, this is about getting to the number of delegates needed to secure the nomination. And 4.8 million people have come out and vote for, voted for Hillary Clinton. So, I, you know, I understand, you know, I used, I've worked in television. I understand mm -hmm. that we want to keep this going and we want to create the drama around it. But let's, let's not forget the facts. And the facts remain uh, that Hillary is very much in the lead. And again, our hope is that we'll continue to pull away next week. Uh, and we're going to work hard to make sure that that's what happens. Well, well let me ask you because I certainly don't want to get ahead of ourselves here, but, but, but looking ahead to the possibility of a general election, there are Democrats I've spoken with who say that, let's say it is Trump versus, versus Clinton, that there are issues that, that Trump actually matches up pretty well with Hillary Clinton, particularly blue-collar voters who, who are upset about trade agreements, for instance, uh, signed by Hillary Clinton's husband, uh, but also the loss of jobs, you know, that, that he's eating into a base that you might have expected her to be able to rely on. And I wonder how significant well, a concern that is. And again, not to get ahead of ourselves, but, but in, in a p potential Clinton-Trump matchup. Well, but here's the thing. I understand why Senator Sanders' campaign wants to talk about the 90s and, you know, attack Hillary Clinton for the things that her husband did, rather than actually talking about her own record when she was a senator. And in the Senate, she voted against CAFTA, uh, the trade agreement, and she's voted against other trade agreements. So I understand why they don't want to talk about that, but we're going to keep talking about that. And that's part of why we're also going to keep talking about what her ideas are, all of which are paid for, all of which are very well thought out in terms of how we create jobs, how we incentivize uh, the pri private industry to, you know, support communities that have been left behind, invest in those communities, make sure we protect health care, make sure we're increasing incomes. So there are some very different ideas uh, that Hillary has uh, about, about those things than does uh, Senator Sanders. And clearly, I think it's pretty obvious Hillary is nowhere near mm -hmm. ever going to run a campaign on the kind of bigotry and bluster uh, that we're seeing from the Republican side led by uh, Donald Trump. So oh, we right. feel good about where we are and we think we have a message that is resonating with people. It is true to their lives. We feel, you know, good going into tonight. I think the debate will be okay. uh, quite gonna have, interesting and we feel it. good about next week. We will have to leave it there. Senior advisor to the Clinton campaign. We got that right. Karen Fitty, thanks for coming on. Thanks.